<laughs> now we're getting serious. Now I know that Martin is going to do the same thing, so... <laughs> Hello guys, Matthew here, and yes, I know that this is a bit weird and unusual for my video, but I do have body parts below my waist, and I do wear pants, actually. Getting inside, there's a good reason why you're seeing me in this format. As some of you may know, I really love cars, and as you do, driving them, sim racing in particular, and it's basically what I do when I have some free time on my hands. With that in mind, for this project, we actually partnered with NVIDIA in cooperation with Gigabyte, in order to help us find the answer to what kind of competitive advantage can you get in the world of sim racing when you pair a GPU that can deliver high frame rates with a high refresh rate monitor. Of course, this kind of job requires the most precise hands, reactions and before all consistent driving. So besides me and my fairly average driving skills at best, I will be joined by two professional drivers and special guests. Miroslav Zrnčević and Martin Kodrić. Miro is a test and development driver in Rimac Automobili, multiple Croatian drift champion, rally driver, automotive journalist, one of the founders of Formula student team at Zagreb's University of Mechanical Engineering. So basically anything that has to do with cars and driving, he's there. Martin has a wide racing pedigree. He's currently a professional racing driver at McLaren, where he drives a 720S GT3. And with it, last year, he participated in the International GT Open Championship, where he ended up in third place overall. So yeah, we have some serious driving skills on the floor and me. Coming down to what are you all probably most interested in, our testing setup. Here next to me, we have a PC using NVIDIA's RTX 2060 Super, which with its 2176 CUDA cores and Turing architecture, proved to be a sweet spot for our 1080p 165Hz monitor, delivering well above 165 FPS in the iRacing simulator, which we are going to use today. Speaking of the monitor, in charge of showing us where we are actually going is Gigabyte's Aorus CV27F gaming monitor, a full HD 27-inch VA display boosting a 165Hz refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time, HDR support, 90% DCI-P3 coverage and much more. On the other hand, something like a GTX 1660 Super is also a great alternative for users who are playing at 1080p and a bit lower refresh rate. Jumping over again to NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2060 Super, just a quick reminder that it comes with dedicated AI processors called Tensor Cores, which are enabling the use of NVIDIA's latest DLSS 2.0 technology in games that support this feature, offering improvement in image quality alongside of boosting your frame rate even more, so basically you are getting best of both worlds here. Back to the configuration itself, we paired all of this with Intel's latest Core i7 10700K on Gigabyte's Z490 Gaming X motherboard with Noctua's NHU12S Chromax Black Air CPU cooler on it, 64GB of 3200MHz Kingston's HyperX Fury DDR4 RAM and their 1TB KC2000 M.2 NVMe SSD, running in a Be Quiet's Pure Base 500DX chassis and powered up with Seasonic's Prime TX 750W power supply. Topping everything off is Logitech's G29 steering set for aiming at Apex interns. During the course of our testing, we are using NVIDIA's Shadow Play for on-screen recording, since it has minimal impact to the game's performance-wise, thanks to using NVIDIA's NVINC encoder technology. Be sure to also check out NVIDIA's latest RTX voice feature if you do a lot of team talk. It can do a lot for you in terms of the noise cancellation. Okay, with everything laid out, let's get to it, shall we? First off, a little chat with our participants. So, Miro, thanks again for coming here. Uh, since you're a test and development driver in Limac Automobili, how big part of your job is actually simulators? I know you do some uh, sim simulations in engineering, but do you actually have some simulators for the development of, of C2? Do, do you drive it uh, virtually or something like that? Yeah, we do a lot of simulations. Um, of course, engineering-wise, uh, simulations from like crash testing and all these kinds of stuff. But also, a big part of that is vehicle dynamics. Um, for me personally, of course, with, uh, especially with the whole situation, um, we were not uh, able to test. And uh, during that situation, I was even more uh, down to the simulator in, in my house. Um, 
I use the simulator a lot to, to just to, to be sharp, to, to stay focused and also to, of course, to, to practice concentration and, and racecraft. I don't need racecraft in my job, but I need precision, I need consistency, so it's, it's a really, really cool um, uh, tool to, to basically to stay on the, the level of the game. For the racers, of course, for the racing drivers, it's it's much more. So that's why we have another professional here who is yeah. he's faster than me. <laughs> but just just to get that off the case. So. <laughs> it's not a competition today, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, so basically, what are your predictions for today? Like, what what kind of advantage can a higher refresh rate monitor bring in, and uh, like more graphical details and, and stuff like that? You know. So for for the professional driver, especially for the race drivers, when you're approaching a new racetrack or, or trying a new car, um, the the mental imaging that you do on the beginning is makes a huge difference at the end. So your, your brain is basically like a sponge. So all the details you see from like trees by the road or uh, curbs or uh, asphalt or whatever, that makes a huge difference because your brain is using that information to basically feed the, 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 the reactions and everything else, so the triggers for the reactions. What happens with the high refresh rate on the, on the simulators is that not only do you have the right feedback, but if you are late, if your frames are, are, are late, basically, those are the pieces of the uh, of, of travel, or so, sorry, meters of, of, of the cars that travels, or centimeters that you don't see. Yeah. So you're basically driving like somebody is like doing this in front of your eyes. It's not really uh, the best solution. So the more refresh, the, the, the higher refresh rate, the more frames you get, your brain is able to function fast and also to to make the prediction and uh, and to see when your braking points are turning points how much grip will you have where where's the other car of course and all these kinds of stuff yeah you're essentially getting newer information yeah yeah more more up to date information because with lower refresh rate monitors you have a much bigger gap between the frames so you're missing some part of the information yeah yeah latency is everything in sim racing so um, of course, like in real racing, the better the equipment, the, the faster you are. It's easier to go faster. It won't make you faster, but it's easier to yeah. be fast and more precise. Um, but the, the, that's why the equipment gets crazy expensive as you go up with, with components. From the wheel itself, the brake pedal, oh, sorry, the, the pedals in, in general, and of course the, 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 the machine itself and the, the frame rates. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it comes to the point where diminishing returns. You have, yeah, like to pay, in, you have to pay much more to get like one, two percent of improvements. Yeah. Like in real racing. <laughs> yeah. you, you easily you get started on the track, but when you start like slicing seconds and pieces of seconds down, it, the, the story gets really expensive. Yeah. Hey Martin. Thank you for finding time and coming here to us no to do this. So first question that pops right into my head is since you do real world racing, do you actually use simulators to polish your skills, especially in, in this time? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I've started using simulator, I think three years ago. Uh, it's just because I, I was going to for simulator sessions in, uh, in UK, uh, just before I was stepping up from uh, single seaters to GT racing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found it quite helpful, and um, and then it was just a matter of how much I'm going there, and, and you know I can use that time better because I need to travel there and everything before each race. And uh, I decided to get my own sim, and, and I just at that time I think a lot of drivers didn't even believe in simulator that it could help you, and it really can. And um, yeah, so I've been using it since end of 2017, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on it a lot now. I mean, uh, there is, there's been a lot of e-racing going on and uh, I've been participating in, in it for, yeah, last three months, four months. And uh, yeah, I really find it useful. Um, it's, it's not a matter of, it's not 100%. It's not, um, I, I would say probably it's like 90% right. Uh, as long as you have right um, motor, steering wheel motor and pedals, it's, it feels good. Uh, and I just think it, it keeps you sharp, you know, uh, since, you know, Racing is not as every other sport where you can train eight hours a day, you yeah, know, yeah. play tennis all the time or football. Yeah, yeah. It's expensive sport for teams and everything, so you, you, you can't be on track all the time. So we as a drivers need to we need to find how we can 
get our skills up and, and, and maintain our form yeah, of off track. And uh, I think that's just one of the ways where you can really do that. Mm, does McLaren have its own like professional level simulator or something? I, like? They have it, but uh, we don't use it much. To be honest, it's more for a car development and we are obviously racing drivers, so we don't we keep out of that one. So um, yeah, we're more oriented for, uh, for racing, you know, car racing. So. Um, yeah, we have our own. It's not that you need to have it, but I have it and most of the drivers got it now as well in mean, this time yeah. when everything was calm for three months. So, uh, yeah. You need to keep pace with, with everything. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, do you participate now, since every, in the midst of everything, do you actually participate in some esports events in, in terms of racing or...? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, iRacing has a lot of, a lot of obviously, it's, it's such open series that you can do. Anyone can organize a series. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, serious races. Um, doesn't matter, they, they're all GT racing. I've raced a lot of Formula 3 on, on iRacing as well because some driver coaches uh, from past organized a series and put, put a good drivers together, like 30, 40 driver field, all professional drivers. So yeah, it's been really, really competitive and good series. Uh, I've also done some racing on Assetto Corsa Competizione just because it's, it's sponsored by our, by our series that I'm racing in GT World Challenge. And we had five rounds of that as well. So yeah, I've been, I've been racing quite a lot in the last couple of months. Awesome, awesome. So what do you expect from jumping from 60 to 165 hertz monitor? Well, uh, I expect it to be more accurate, to be honest. Uh, obviously, as it says, it's nearly triple the, the yeah. strength. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the test goes. Yeah, we will definitely see the end result. I can't yeah. wait to see that. For our first testing scenario, we are going to have a blind test where Miro and Martin will do a series of laps not knowing at what exact refresh rate is the monitor set. This will be only known to me and you. I will put that information in the top corner of the video. And after that, I will reveal to them which one is which, and we will see if they were correct with their predictions. Are they on the right path? Okay, let's burn some rubber now. Well, at the least virtually. Miro went in first to do some laps. I've set him up with the 165 Hz refresh rate for the first blind test without him knowing what it is. So, how are you liking it so far? Do, do you feel anything different? Or? I would say this is a lower frame rate. I don't know which it is, of course, but I feel that uh, my eyes are a little bit tired. Okay. Um, it's not bad, but um, I don't think this is particularly high. Whee. After 10 minutes of driving, I've brought the refresh rate down to 60 Hz without showing him what I'm actually changing and, well, let's hear what he has to say. So, uh, you're now trying a, a second scenario. Yeah. Do, do you feel anything? This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is like, this, so, is, this is really bad. <laughs> so. So what do you think now in comparison to the to the first first round? Do you think that that was maybe uh, higher refresh rate? And first round was far higher refresh rate than this for sure. So this is a big difference. Yeah, as was soon this as like you, 60 hertz maybe. <laughs> as soon as you started driving, I, I've also noticed it. it's like huge difference. Yeah, I can see it. All in all, Miro picked up the difference quite clearly once I made the change, so I went in to have a quick chat and recap with him. So Miro, we have actually established something here, I think. You, you've, you've actually noticed the difference pretty, pretty obviously and pretty instantly once we jumped to a different scenario. I, I was thinking maybe at first like roaming around between three or two different scenarios, but you caught it up right away. Yeah, it's, it was quite obvious, so the first one was much higher than the, 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 the second one in terms of uh, basically the, the, the latency, the, the second one was much worse. Even now when I'm driving, I can see that the curves are floating a little bit, so it's not really a reference that you would like, especially not for a racing sim like this. I mean, you can drive and everything will be okay, you'll get used to it at some point, but that's not the point. The point is that you sit and it feels as close to the real world and the real life as possible. So, um, you have to do some adaptation for any sim, 
and for any wheel or for any graphic card. Um, but on the other hand, the point is to, to do as less as possible. So just like in the real, real world, so you can deal with the most important part and that's driving. So braking points, trajectories, stuff like that. Next in line was Martin. I've left the 60Hz refresh rate for him to try it out, again without him knowing. He also did a couple of laps and with that I've asked him for his feedback in terms of the whole look and feel, so to speak. So Martin, what's your conclusion for this first round? What, what would you say? I would say it feels pretty clear, to be honest. You would say that it's a 60 hertz or 165 hertz? I'd say it's, I, I wouldn't say it's 165. You wouldn't? Okay, we shall see. This is just the first round for this first testing scenario. I, I just look at it by, uh, just going by the grandstand and stuff. Uh -huh. You can see that, that like, it's very clear, I think. So yeah, I would, it just confuses me because it's one monitor. So oh, okay. what I'm used to is just a little bit different. And if you had three monitors, I would tell you right away, but. Okay, we will now switch it up. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. No, so, so what did I say? I think it's, it is 660. Ah, you think that it is? Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, because I, I think the, the grants and everything is quite clear okay. from what I see. Okay. We will now switch it up, or okay. maybe we won't. So we okay. will see if you'll, you'll get a difference, All right, if, let's, if let's there, there is any. After that, I've bumped up the refresh rate to 165 hertz without him knowing what I did, left him again to do some more driving, and as you will hear from Martin, he noticed right away that something is different. So Martin, now you had two examples back to back. What would you say now, after you tried the second example, um, this second well, example? Well, it seems like I have maybe more detail in this one. Like, okay. What about smoothness of the of the picture? Like you f you feel that you have uh, more details, but like what about the perceived? No, I feel I feel it was smoother before. Oh really? Guess what? This is 165, and the one before was 60. Okay, so that's why we have higher detail in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went down back to 60 hertz again just for the fun of it, before also he can experience that jump or fall from higher to lower refresh rate, as same as Miro did, which then definitely just convinced him even more about what just happened. Yeah, you can see uh, just by looking at the curves how much less clear it is, you know, how much on the, when you, when you put 165 or the higher rate, you yeah. can just you can just see how much, it's like skipping, let's say, yeah, and yeah. the other one is like you slowed it down, and especially you can you can see it when you break and in these lower speed corners, you just where you can just see apex much more clear with a yeah, with a higher because you have higher, you, you have more information exactly yeah and and that's I think the key where you just stay more consistent with the other one just because you can see better you know perception is better off the corner yeah now it's it's mu it's much more visible when you jump down from yeah, we jump down than rather than the uh, other one. With Miro we went from 165 to down 60, to, okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, he, he, he was like yeah, imme it's, immediately it's, like, yeah. this is It's like blurry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it feels blurry. You know, when you try it first, you're like, oh, okay, it doesn't, it seems all right. But then when you really take the step up and then you go down from it, then it's, then you can just notice a difference straight away. Yeah, just. Awesome, awesome feedback. Yeah, it's definitely, the detail is it's much better in the other one. Well, this little experiment and blind test was interesting and although they couldn't tell what the refresh rate was for their first test, they did pick up the difference instantly once we made that change from higher to lower refresh rate setting. Finally diving into it a bit deeper, we're going to compare two very distinct scenarios. One where we lock up display screen refresh rate to 60Hz and the other one where we bump that up all the way up to 165Hz. This time both Miro and Martin will be informed about which one is which. They will have some time in order to adjust to different driving conditions so to speak, after which they'll try to do their best lap times on the same circuit with the same car and fixed setup. This is then followed up with a direct comparison of labs between these two scenarios, where we will try to pick apart the subtle or not so subtle differences in performance of Miro and Martin, and I will also try my luck facing them on the track. 
So let's hop back into the seat and see how bad I actually am at this. After a quick talk with the guys, we all in the end decided that Martin should do this testing from start to finish, just so it's not redundant as we would be doing the same experiment twice, but most importantly since Martin is doing more competitive racing, it tends to be more consistent and precise, in a way we could really pinpoint the difference between the 60 and 165 Hz refresh rate scenario when trying to achieve best lap time. After everything was prepared for this second testing scenario, Martin really went for it, he was driving around half an hour at 60 Hz, where he then set his best time for that refresh rate, and after that we switched that up to 165 Hz, and this time he knew which one was which. Just a few laps later he shaved off his best lap time set at 60 Hz for a bit above 0.2 seconds with the 165 Hz refresh rate, so basically right away, which was really surprising for all of us, and everything on how he actually achieved that is explained in this following detailed recap and telemetry data analysis of Miro. Okay, so basically this is the VRS or Virtual Racing School uh, setup where you can see the telemetry data for each lap. And we took the fastest lap with uh, the lower resolution, uh, sorry, lower frame rate and uh, uh, with higher frame rate. Higher frame rate was quicker um, and it was overall uh, 0.2 seconds quicker. So uh, you can see here that, the, for example, the, the throttle input was later, so it, he released throttle later, so he had a more uh, entry speed, so he carried more, more speed into the corner. Uh, the minimum speed was less, but the exit speed was more or less the same. Uh, also, the braking input was also later with a little bit of spike and uh, gradual or, or more smoother uh, braking uh, into, the, into the first corner. So this first corner is quite tricky because uh, it's a fast corner, but you have to set up the car for the corner before on the entry to be really, really precise and to catch a little bit of camber on the in, uh, uh, entry of the corner. And for that, you have to be precise. So if you see uh, where your curbs are, if you, if you see where the, where the um, elevation in the uh, asphalt is, then you can, you can be so precise. Um, second corner or this, this part is even more trickier because this is a long sweeping right hand corner where you have to be really extra precise and stay on the, on the edge and uh, aim this exit corner uh, quite good because you have a, a long uh, stretch where you can gain a lot of time. So again, uh, breaking through a really, really slippery corner with, uh, with the maximum balance of the car, you can also see the, the braking inputs that they were uh, much more smoother and uh, uh, much more precise. So um, I would say uh, overall, the, the, the driving style wise, uh, he was really um, uh, more smooth and uh, more precise. It looked like you don't, don't have to anticipate for something, but you can react. Yeah, exactly. You can drive more aggressive, but also be more precise. So I was carrying entry speeds into the corner. I had higher minimum speeds. Uh, especially turn one, because with a higher fresh rate, um, you could just you could just feel the corner better, or let's say you could you could anticipate what you're doing better. So everything was happening at the moment rather yeah. than you're slightly not react, later. React exactly. Yeah. So you could really use brakes and brake deeper into the corner and hold the apex more, just because you can be more precise. Whereas with with a lower refresh rate, you couldn't do that because you could have to brake sort of and then, then aim for the corner and and, and try to get it correct. And uh, I think that's a big difference and that's where I gained most of my time, really. And yeah. both laps were good laps, it's just with the other one you could just take extra advantage because you have that luxury of, of everything having at the right time. Yeah, it's really awesome to see all, all that data laid out like, like, like this and you can like see the obvious difference. It's, it's there, it's definitely yeah, exactly. there, yeah. One, one also more, um, good, good point is that, okay, the G29 is obviously the, the maybe the wider spread steering that everybody uses. Yeah, so yeah. more for, mainstream. Yeah, more professional, um, professional level uh, gear is like direct drive wheels or something like that. It really uh, takes the, um, the, the brain needs the information that you're taking from the wheel, but also from the eyes. So for example, the, the less steering you use, um, you, you're using less of the tire. So on, on this particular uh, point, um, Martin was using 
less steering on the steering input. So obviously when you're steering the car, you're slowing the car down or you cannot use the maximum grip because the, the yeah, front, yeah. Grip, front tires are, are fighting with uh, longitudinal lateral grip. Obviously the, the rears are, are yeah. the, um, the drive ones. So um, yeah, overall it's quite clear, at least for us. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It's been a great, great uh, comparison. And, uh, yeah, you can clearly see that. Um, we were aiming for that. Higher is better. Yeah. <laughs>So guys, we saw everything plain and simple. Yeah. It was straightforward, but did you expect these results coming into this or? I mean, uh, you obviously kind of expected to yeah. get this higher performance and I've, I've done the same change at home in my sim. And, uh, but I just realized how much more significant it is really with this, with this test we've done and uh, that I made the right choice. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. You, Miro? Uh, I was kind of expecting it also, but um, I, I haven't still, my, my sim is, is uh, not still on that level. So I haven't uh, realized the jump from, let's say, 90 frames per second to 144. Uh, oh, sorry, 144 hertz. So yeah, the, the jump from lower resolution or low, lower, lower frequency to higher is not that vivid as from the higher to lower. So. Uh, worse to better, you don't feel that much difference. When you got, come down, you, you see that. Yeah, it's over, e always easier to, to, to accommodate to something better, yeah. But yeah. when you go back, it's, well, what's this? Yeah, you have the worst one and you kind of feel, oh yeah, this is what I have and ah, it's not too bad. But then you get the luxury of trying the better one and then it's like, oh my God, <laughs> the difference is so massive. So you're definitely upgrading in the near future. Yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> the plan. <laughs> and you're staying where you I'm are. I'm staying where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe go a bit higher. With yeah, well, even, even more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for, for now it's okay, but uh, yeah, I might go higher. You never awesome. know. I might awesome. need it. <laughs> thank you guys like once again for coming. No thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you for everything. So here I am back at my studio, a day after we actually recorded everything, gathering my thoughts and impressions. In conclusion, is there any difference between the monitor's regular 60Hz and in our case 165Hz refresh rate, and for that matter any other higher refresh rate monitors like the 144 or 120Hz models? As you've heard from Miro and Martin directly, yes there is. Being in from the perceived smoothness during racing, to actually gaining that extra edge and ability to tap into your driving skills just a bit more, delivering you a chance to overall be an even better driver with improving your lap times and competitive edge, especially when paired with something that can deliver that kind of performance, like Nvidia's GeForce RTX 2060 Super Series, which we used for this occasion. Oh yeah, I didn't forget about this. I did a couple of laps after the guys were done. I was around one second slower than Martin, also driving the Radical SR8, on Okayama International Circuit, the short version of it. So not great, not terrible, but I was pleased. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope that it was as fun for you as it was for us. And of course that you learned something new along the way. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if that was the case. Once again, a big thank you to our sponsors for making this possible. And of course to our participants, Miro and Martin, be sure to follow them. I will put their links in the description box down below as well as everything else related to this project, in case you need any additional information. So yeah, that's it for this time. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this type of content, and be sure to press that notification bell down below also, so you don't miss out on a new video like this one. And until then, catch you later guys.